Let's take a look at a defrost thermostat. You might find one of these in your fridge or freezer, and it's in a very cost-engineered package. It really is minimalist. And one of the most interesting things, if I zoom down this, you'll see that to make a hermetic seal, is that is that a valid? Can I call this hermetic? It is. It does feel slightly pressurized, but the true definition of a hermetic seal is one that's airproof. But in reality, these wires could theoretically pass air down inside. So I'm not sure what would happen in, in a varying pressure if they'd sort of equalise. I don't know if the way it's been crimped here, the plastic of the cable itself has been fused into this plastic. I wonder if that also pushed it in amongst the uh, cores inside the wire. But anyway, uh, this thing has a thermostat which it says N12-5. Not sure that is, but I would expect it to go just above freezing temperature that it would cut out. Uh, it would normally be closed. It would actually open up as soon as it reached a sort of higher temperature. At the moment, it is open because uh, it's at room temperature, which is how it's designed to work. There is also a emergency last resort, 72 degrees Celsius thermal fuse in here that if the this fails and it keeps the heater on all the time, this fuse will blow. Now, it's interesting. Let's open this up. It's marked... PB302. I looked that up on eBay. Do you know what I found? I found porn. That was unexpected. Playboy. I guess PB302. That must be edition 302. That is quite heavy. Oh, thanks to Andrew for sending these uh, industrial grade scissors. Uh, I kind of want more out here. I want to open it more. Let's try snip it down like this. I'm cutting it down along the side of this. I kind of want to actually peel this off and see if it's done any damage to the cables as well. I may have to pause to peel that open, but uh, in the meantime... Oh no, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Mm-hmm, I'm keeping going. We'll open the, the actual the thermal trip as well. It's quite interesting the way these work because everything's cost-engineered. Uh, when the, the motor, there's a motor, a geared motor, that initiates a defrost. It's very, very slow, but the geared motor is designed such it's got a little cam that just swipes round wheels. I've shown it in a previous video. And uh, when it turns on the heater, it switches the motor itself off. And then if it was to continue again, it would almost immediately switch back to the motor running again. So what actually happens with this is that the motor... Because of the way it's configured in the circuitry, it switches itself off, brings the heater on, but as soon as the heater's up to temperature and this goes open circuit, the motor is effectively wired across this. So the motor starts again, running through the, finding a path through the heater, and then it terminates the defrost. It's quite interesting. Notice how this wire at the bottom is soldered, this one is crimped, and this is a crimp here. They usually use crimps on thermal fuses because if you solder them, it can actually trigger the fuse. So let's cut some wires. I shall bring in a pair of side cutters. So I'll cut that wire. And I'll cut that wire down there. And indeed that one. Let's cut all the wires. Now I want to kind of peel this apart and just see how tightly it's sealed inside. I think it is sealed very tightly. Let me grab a pair of pliers and use brute force and ignorance to peel my way into this. That is super tight. I wonder how much uh, setting up of the equipment is needed to actually get this accurately to the point it doesn't damage the wires. I'd guess there is a possibility that uh, they could, at the wrong temperature, it could physically expose copper. But having said that, it is just squishing the plastic, isn't it? And it is shrouded under here, so it shouldn't be too bad. Let me have another go at this. Occasionally checking the screen to make sure I am actually in shot. Peeling it off, it's exposed the middle wire, which is the orange one. Is it damaged by... I mean, it's, it is now. But how is that sealed? That is totally fused onto the plastic. Oh, that is totally fused on. And it doesn't look like it's uh, done much damage. Although you can see some of the colour spread where it's pinched it, I think it's just a tiny amount just because, well, it's crimped it flat. It must hold these wires in a jig when it does it and then crimp it very precisely with some uh, indents in the dies for that. Interesting stuff. Okay. Let's open the thermal fuse, which is kind of crimped shut. 
This is where a sharp pointy object can be used to stab my fingers. I'm expecting a bimetallic disc inside this, but we'll soon find out. It's interesting how the products are just so cost engineered. There's a disc, is that the disc? Oh, there's the bimetallic disc. And a little plastic spacer, so here's the disc. Clicky, clicky, clicky. And uh, it just pushes that contact down to actually break the circuit. Interesting. What about the thermal fuse? I don't think I've ever opened one of these. I should open one of these, shouldn't I? I really should open one of these. It's kind of sealed with a bead of stuff at the end. What if I squish it? This might not be the way to open it. It might not be an easy thing to open full stop, but you know, there's only one way to find out, and that's to try and open it. This actually feels fairly solid. Oh, maybe not there. Uh, can I slice into this in some way? Oh, that is ceramic at the end. That'll be why it's so solid. Yeah, that, that would definitely work. Let's try pinching the end off this. It's making scrunchy noises. Uh, right. What does it reveal? It reveals powdered ceramic. Oh, you know what? I bet it's got a very thin wire going through that, that when it melts, it may kind of absorb into that like a high rupture capacity. There's actually what looks like a, a little spring in there, right? Tell you what, give me a second. I'm just going to pause while I peel this back because I think it's going to take a moment. One moment, please. Okay, that was kind of inconclusive. I think it would be interesting to take a Dremel to one of these uh, and slit one open because it had two springs in it. It had a small heavyweight spring at the bottom and it had a softer spring above that with a sort of serrated spacer. I'm wondering if these were actually making sure I don't eat in this powder because, well, I'm trying to lick my fingers to pick this up. This is probably a bad idea with unknown white powders on the table. But uh, I'm guessing that maybe there's a thermal alloy, like a, a low melting point soda, and then the springs retract uh, to break the circuit. But then this loose powder inside then fills that space to make sure it can conduct through it. I'm not sure. It wasn't really as obvious as I was expecting. I don't really see a sign of the obvious alloy. That I was expecting. But interesting. Very interesting indeed. But there we go. That is what's inside these uh, cost-optimised refrigeration industry thermostats. This one came with sort of wiring loom suggesting that it's probably made to fit a standard model. Well, that's pretty... That's a statement of the obvious. But um, it appears that you can get these readily on eBay. I'm not sure what the quality would be. Usually you're better going to a prominent parts supplier if you do have a failure of something like this in your fridge because defrosting tons of food or, or cooking it at high temperature inside the fridge when the heater jams on is not really a good option. But there we go. Worth taking apart. Interesting to see inside. Bonus extra footage. How the thermal fuse actually works and what those two springs were. The thermal fuse actually has a sliding contact inside. It's a little uh, plate flared out onto the end so that it actually can slide backwards and forwards inside the metal tube. And the metal tube is one of the connections. It's bonded on here. The ceramic insert at the end has the pin going through to a contact here. And normally, this heavy spring pushes this sliding contact against that contact there. When the temperatures reach that this compound at the end here that that heavy spring presses against melts, that spring is then pushed into the melted compound by this weaker spring. And in doing so, it slides the contact inside the tube away from that contact and breaks the circuit. That's how they work. I did not know that was how they worked. The powder that came out may actually have been uh, the crushed compound that was going to melt. Uh, I guess it's basically put in as a sort of powder and compacted down. I'm not really sure. But um, that's quite interesting. That's absolutely not what I expected them to be like in normal operation. So there we go. That's something I've learned tonight as well. 
Good stuff.